If you caught our previous episodes, you know that we took our oldest daughter, Reagan, and her boyfriend, Mason, out into BGC for the very first time. This is their first visit to the Philippines. We're super excited to have them in town. And we took them around and gave them some little bites of food along the way. But you know that we barely scratched the surface when it came to Filipino food. But that all gets remedied today because we are going out on an incredible Filipino feast lunch experience that's here in Manila. This was a suggestion from our very great friend, Melanie. I think this is the third episode where we've mentioned or actually showed her. The first of those being when we met her in Abu Dhabi and that was on our Always Be Changing channel. Melanie's an incredible friend and she's actually from Manila, but has been living in Abu Dhabi. But when Melanie reached out to me and said, I've got the perfect next episode for Live the Philippines, I didn't even have to wait to get on the phone to hear the details. I knew it was gonna be epic and it is gonna be epic. And our grab should almost be here, two minutes away. You guys excited? Colt is like Brooklyn and Mason's shadow since they've been here. This is the first time that we're getting a six-seater grab and actually using all six seats. We're gonna be packed in here a bit. Reagan and Mason need to explain his hairdo because it did not look like that three weeks ago. It was kind of just off a of whim. He, like, three days before said he was thinking about a buzz cut and then we did it. You did the whole thing. You buzzed his hair and did the design and the hair dyeing and everything. His hair was professionally buzzed, but I got the first, like, Center row. <laughs> that was pretty stylish. I should have just stick, stuck with that one, huh? Was the dye the color always the plan, or did we buzz and then go, hey, I have an idea, let's come? No, we were always planning on dyeing it. And doing like an intricate okay. pattern. Yeah, we have a lot of options. Didn't tell my parents that though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they knew about the buzz, they did not know about the design. It was a surprise. <laughs> We are right across the street from the President's Palace, which is called Malasan Yang. And the President currently lives there. They also do public tours each day. Uh, so this house where we are, Cabell, is a mix of uh, art gallery, historical building, and a restaurant. On the art gallery side, this is one of the famous pieces, the statue of somebody reading a newspaper. And not just any newspaper, but the Manila Times. That's because the Rosas family that owned this home prior to the Cabells owning it is the owner of the Manila Times, which is the oldest English newspaper in the Philippines. But let's go inside. King! Phil, good morning, <laughs> welcome to Cabell. Thank you so much. So this is King. And by the way, the tie-in with Melanie is that King and Melanie used to work together for the same airline, yeah, Etihad. The national airline of UAE. When King lived in Abu Dhabi also. So. So shout out to Miss Mel. <laughs> <laughs> Show us your place, King. Oh, this is incredible. Of course, I will. I love that he's wearing his Filipiniana. Uh, what is this called? It's this is what we call our Parong Tagalog. It's a national um, the costume for the Philippines for the gentlemen. But this is already recreated. It used to be like, be like long sleeves and more of a formal type. But it's like more relaxed and modern to fit the weather and the day-to-day -day atmosphere as well. So this is what we usually get a chance to wear every day. Well, Phil and I just had to wear that kind of a garb for the Pusang Pinoy Awards that we went to recently. We travel to countless countries around the world where our American power cables are essentially useless without an adapter. Hotels sometimes make low-quality ones available, but never enough for all four or five of us to use without sharing. But thanks to our partnership with Tessin, our entire family now travels with convenient of being able to power and charge our dozens of collective devices no matter where we go. The Tessin travel adapter can plug into four different international socket configurations, giving us worldwide compatibility covering more than 200 countries. It provides 100 to 250 volts through a universal outlet that accepts six types of plugs and through four USB charging ports along the bottom. This allows us to charge up to five devices at once on a single adapter. It comes in black and white, and you can choose from four maximum total outputs. The 15 watt, 35 watt, 65 watt, or 100 watt, depending on how quickly you need to charge multiple devices. We carry a combination. One of the coolest parts is the dual USB-C setup that supports fast charging. 
that can take a completely dead battery up to a useful charge in as little as 30 minutes. On the 65 watt version, that useful charge is about 65%. These adapters are also super compact, cordless, and really lightweight. So we can each toss one into our luggage without taking up any valuable space. And that's great when you're packing four or five of them for every trip. So if you travel internationally as much as we do, we highly recommend the Test and Travel Adapter. It's our favorite combination of quality and affordability, whether you need one just for yourself or several for the entire family. You can buy yours using the link in the description below. So comfy in here. Yeah, this is their dining room, and we're actually here early before their lunch service because their lunch service gets pretty crowded with politicians and high up officials. And we're none of those, so we're here before the crowd. So we have like a special menu? Yes. This is my favorite kind of experience when you get to sit down and just let them take care of you and give you the best from the kitchen. And toasted pandisol with mango sauce. Oh, thank you. Uh, signature scent, some paguita, some vanilla, some calamansi, and they make this only for Cabell. And it's a very cold, unusually damp towel. So perfect coming in on a hot day if you want to cool off a little bit. And then we've already got an amuse-bouche on the table and this is a pandasal with a mango salsa on top. So some spring onion, some mango of course, and some tomato. You guys gonna try it? Mmm. That's delicious. Crunch from the pandasal. Very sweet mango of course because it's Philippine mango. Love it. We're gonna be going on a trip without leaving. We're gonna be experiencing three of the main regions in the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And we're gonna have classic Filipino dishes from those areas, but it's also going to be seasonal too. So it's gonna be based on the best fruits and ingredients that are available right now, because the menu changes every couple of weeks, but it's all inspired from those three regions. It was curated by my cousin. He did a deep dive research on what are the best dishes to offer from three different islands of the Philippines. On your table napkins, you see different prints. These are from small business owners. So for instance, this table napkin is sorbetes. Sorbetes means ice cream. And I believe for you, Phil, over here. This is our national dance. It's called the Tinipling. Oh, yes, we've yes. seen this before, so, where you jump, like, kind of yes, jump no, over uh, the sticks yeah. and, yeah. Oh, uh, Brooklyn stuff. Yeah, she did that in, in Bahal. The napkins are all different and tell the story of the history of the Philippines. Uh, we each have different ones. Farmer feeling his uh, farm. And of course, for our young lady over here, this are jitli. Brooklyn's getting the Clara tea, so that's basically calamansi tea. Reagan's drink is Dolce Blanco, and it has some lychee in it and pineapple, pineapple coconut. coconut. Mm, that's good. And the cherry on top. Yum. One to ten, Reagan, rate it. I don't know. It's good. It's like an eight or a nine. She's a like tough a critic. Oh, this looks good. Ooh. We have a, a couple of bites. It looks so good. Well, it's one of our most adventurous eaters in the family. He oh, loves yeah, Filipino. That's really good. Yeah. The initial things that we have on the table right now, a couple of appetizers. Uh, one is called ukoi, and that is deep fried sweet potato. There's some carrots on there. And I already, I already tasted some, it's really good. And it's like a vinegar sauce on the side. And then we have some lumpiong Shanghai, which is a lumpia, but Shanghai style filled with pork. And those are already a hit. But I want to try our cocktail. This is one of the signature cocktails here, and it is called the Miguelito, named after King's brother Miguel. And it's just calamansi juice and gin. Two of my favorite things to have in a cocktail here in the Philippines. Mmm. Just putting the glass up to your nose, you really get the scent from the calamansi that's on there. Super light and refreshing. I don't know if there's any added simple syrup or anything like that, so it's really well balanced. This is the kind of fruity drink I would like to have the right amount of gin, and not too much sugar. I think they have a pretty spectacular cocktail program here based on what I've seen online and what I see on the menu. My kind of place. Uh, we just tried the, what are they called? Lumpia. 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 It's really good. It's like a spring roll, but 
Oh my. It's, the seasoning is different. It's yeah, good. It's really good, and the sauce is good. I'm dying to try it myself. And I need the sauce. I don't want you to yell at me for not using enough sauce, because I actually love sauce. I could live off the sauces alone. Filipinos don't yell, they suggest. Strongly. I'm gonna put an emphasis on this. Mm. It's, it's really good. Today we're going through a, you're going through a culinary journey. You don't necessarily have to go through the islands, but through the food, at least you get the chance to experience what is being offered now on our three uh, major islands for that uh, matter. So usually here in the Philippines, unlike other countries, especially in Europe, uh, and some parts of uh, America, they really have a staple um, appetizer dish or something on the menu to start off the meal. Here in the Philippines, we don't really have appetizer down and enjoy the meal. That's just how we do it here in the Philippines. I'm gonna try the ukoi here, and then do you just like dip it in here? Or, yes. or, or, you or if you want to put, put it some on of top? this on top? Yes, please. Let's do some of that. Let me just uh, start eating these here. No! I'm just yes. kidding. Oh, it's good. I think there's almost maybe cucumber or squash or something in there also. Tastes like sweet potato fries, but very finely sliced. Now we're gonna get to explore the house a little bit and see some of the history here and also the other art features. So these are the old type of houses during those days where you have big doors, high ceilings. Unlike now, it's gonna get smaller and quite tight for that matter. Another statue behind me that relates to the Manila Times. This one's a paper boy selling the Manila Times. And from here, right in the garden, you can see just how close we are to Malasanyong Palace. They've named this garden after their grandfather because he was asthmatic, so he used to really enjoy the fresh air, and he would go out to their garden uh, and spend most of his time there. And this is actually a work in progress. They're planning on putting some shaded areas in here. And you can see there's like a lot of vegetation and some art pieces out here too, so it's a really nice area. It's named the Heraklios Garden because his grandfather was Dr. Heraklios Cabell. Of course, Cabell! If you look at the logo for Cabell, it may look familiar, and that's because it is inspired by this door knocker right here, but uh, it's just turned so that it turns it into a C. But what's particularly inspiring are the four pieces right here behind it, which represent the three siblings, Isabel, uh, who is King's sister, and then Miguel, his brother, of course, and his mom, Melissa. There's just so much inspiration from this restaurant from their mother, who raised them as a single mom and is inspiring on the culinary side, too, is my understanding, because even back in grade school, Miguel would sell some of her cooking to classmates, and then they ended up having a pizza and burger house and a steak house. And this is not even the only restaurant that they have within the collection in the family. Uh, there is also Palm Grill. And that particular restaurant you might see more of around the Philippines because they're looking into franchising and even different, more like express type of concepts for it. Uh, so quite the little collection of restaurateurs in the family. This is Cafe Clara, named after the first grandchild for King's mother, so the first niece in his family. Lots of really great baked goods, uh, some really familiar Filipino flavors, and then also some flavors that any foreigner might enjoy if they weren't, weren't gonna be adventurous, like a chocolate cake. But I love seeing this cake here because I love the salty mixed with the sweet. So the cashews, that is, classic Filipino because there are so many cashew forests in the Philippines. Virtually everything in the restaurant, from the furniture to the napkins, of course, to the ingredients for the foods and even the scents that are signature to this restaurant that are in the little cold towels that we used at the very beginning, sourced locally, so small businesses. This home, this business, this family is not just about the history of the Philippines. It's like modern day, they're still doing everything they can to impact the community and the culture and really support other Filipinos to ensure the legacy of the entire idea. This is my favorite part of the house because it gives tribute to the ladies. Go ladies. This is a, a photo of his mom. His mom and his sister Isabel. It's traditional in a Filipino home to have a, a place dedicated to show respect for the strong women in the family. 
Well, one of the cocktails may be named after his brother Miguel, but this speakeasy is named after King himself, King's Speakeasy. It's a popular haunt, doesn't open until 5 p.m., but really popular with some of the people from the palace across the street who wanna wait to commute back home and avoid the traffic. So they'll come over here and maybe get a little bit of additional work done, have some cocktails, some drinks while they wait. So obviously it'd be one of my favorite places here. They have a lot of Pasa Lubang for sale, which is sort of like a souvenir, I would say. Mostly the gifts are locally sourced, but uh, some of them are foreign, like the coffee, because there is a big bartering relationship uh, that was typical. Also, the art, everything you see is for sale. So if there's a painting you like, you can buy it and take it home. It's for sale by the artist, to be clear, not the restaurant. Upstairs they have this gorgeous room and it's called Isabella's Corner because she was the fashionista of the family and she was also really into art. So a lot of her passions are at, on display here. Uh, so this is more artwork from local artists that they don't charge to display their work here. So they're not profiting from the artists at all, which I love and respect. This floor also has several private rooms for small events or special events. This private room is called Melissa's Room, named after their mother, and it's got a lot of really cool mementos that are just symbolic of her and the experiences uh, that she's brought to the family in the restaurant. It's also painted this beautiful bright orange, which also represents her because the kids all kind of refer to her as their sunshine. So it represents the sunshine. Lunch is ready, so let's get back to our table. This is Tiula Itu. And it's a soup with beef, short ribs, and burnt coconut. Chula means like the ginola in Luzon. Itum means black. That's why it's called chula itum because of the dark uh, colored soup for that. And it's actually from southern Mindanao. They also have conceit, which is their version of sinigang. And for that sour taste, they use Botswan. Instead of importing it from Bisaya, they have an, a local person that they buy it from up north. All the dishes have arrived at the table and we have an insane amount of food to cover. So we have uh, the lechon kawali from Luzon, beef gorma from Mindanao, the white rice of course, that is a shrimp looking dish but it's not quite a shrimp, it's like a, a, a hybrid shrimp. It's in the same family as shrimp and prawns and lobster. It's loquan from Zamboanga, which is where King and his family are from. The chicken is Pyongang Manok from Southern Mindanao. Uh, do the chicken for an hour and 30 minutes with the coconut milk, and then you have to grill it and, so, and other seven Asian spices to complete the dish. The pork is Humba from the Visayas region, and the salad is Ampalea salad from Luzon. Yeah, I think yeah. we need to dig yeah. in, let's go, yeah. The chankuali, crispy. Salad looks so good. And what was the green in it? Palea. I think everybody knows that lechon is one of my favorite things. I love the crispiness. Mmm. That was a perfect bite. So crispy, so tender inside. Delicious. The con, the shrimp thing was really good. You have to peel it out of the shell and like take the head off, but. Dip it in the sauce again, that's great. Hey Mason, after the Pyongyang, what do you think? It's really good. It's very saucy, but it's like the way that it's cooked is really good. It falls off the bone. The sauce is so good. All the sauces we've had have been outstanding. This colma is like their take on curry. Yeah. So beef curry. Coconut and cinnamon in there. Oh, that's fantastic. And the the beef is really tender. Like just, I think, cooked absolutely perfectly, which is no surprise. We learned a really fun fact about Mason at lunch today. This is his first time leaving the U.S. since he was three months old. It's it's a new experience, but it's really fun. Did you ever think that your first time leaving the U.S. would be the Philippines? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> it was it was a surprise. Uh, Mexico, yeah. Because that's the easiest place for U.S. to travel to is Mexico usually. But no, he's going all the way to the Philippines. 15-hour flight for his first trip out of the U.S. 
other than when he was a baby. I'm not gonna say it well, but it does taste good. Tiula Itum. Tiula Itum. Yeah, I am saying it right. Well, it is delicious. So I think this is braised beef in there. So it's cooked really slowly, and this is another meat that just kind of falls apart. But again, the broth. The sauces and the broths, oh, 10 out of 10. And this was the stew that Colt was talking about. This drink is for your beautiful mom, Erin. It's, we created this drink last couple of days ago when I found out you were coming over. It's made of mango. And if you will like it, it will be eventually in our drinks and we will call it Emo for Emotional. Because <laughs> I'm so emotional. Erin's mango obsession for loving our country, for making Philippines her second home. Thank you so much to your family, everyone. Uh, locally produced gene, the same thing we use for the migalito. So I hope, we, I hope it will balance the sweetness and the kick of the local gin for that. King, I can't thank you enough. You know, you guys are the first people to ever name a drink after me. And other than Phil, the only ones to make a specialty cocktail. This is amazing. Let's see if it makes me cry. Oh, they're coming. Those tears are coming. It's really good. It's beautiful. <laughs> no, that's really so sweet and thoughtful. Thank you so much. This is delicious. When you come to Cabell, ask for the emo. Aaron's mango obsession. I happen to know that Melanie may be involved in the creation of this cocktail and the naming of this cocktail. Oh, that is good. Oh. If you're not obsessed with mango before the having the cocktail, you will be afterwards, that's for sure. Nobody's covered the humba yet, so I'm gonna dive into this. This is a slow-cooked pork. It's fermented black beans, there's banana in here, and actually I need to get a little piece of banana, and then some sugar, and this is basically a riff on adobo, but from Visayas. Mmm, what a cool little mix of flavors. This kind of reminds me of like a Kahlua pork where you would mix pineapple for the sweetness with that slow-cooked pork, but instead of pineapple, it's banana, and it's really good. That's one of my favorites. Melanie, of course, did not steer us wrong. This place is phenomenal, and we could go to a bunch of different Filipino restaurants to try some of these things. They wouldn't be prepared as well, most likely, and to be able to hit all three of those islands or regions is super convenient. And such a great way, I think, as a first experience to Mason and Reagan to really try Filipino foods. I mean, what better way than to have the entire spread on the table in front of you at once and be able to compare and contrast. This is phenomenal. It's so good. <laughs> So my favorite was definitely the soup. Same with Mason. Um, I really like, what were these called? The shrimp? The con. That was really good. The salad was really good. I think those were my favorites. The chicken was also really good. I have to say everything was delicious, but I still have some standouts. Uh, the soup, like Reagan pointed out, that was their favorite, everybody's favorite maybe, and the chicken definitely but I think I might have also really loved the beef curry one. Coma, it was so good. I think we've made pretty good work of this spread so far, although I don't wanna get in trouble, I didn't have any white rice, that was an oversight. I just looked over and saw it and realized I never had any white rice, but I think we've got some desserts on the way, so it's good that I save a little bit of room anyway. O-O-E. And I'm so happy that cashew cake is here. If you don't know, O-O-E means one of everything. <gasps> this is their version of the Halo Halo. They have fresh fruit and no shaved ice in there. I'm telling Reagan, you've got to mix it up. We have a little bit of everything in this bite, and then I'll mix it. And maybe you want to have a guess what's the food? Watermelon, mango, now. There you go. <laughs> Those are three tropical foods. Now I have a pop quiz for you guys. This dish is called Halo Halo. What do you think Halo means? Ice. Ice, ice. Sweet. Sweet is a good guess too. Wrong. Um, what did what did Aaron tell you to do with it? Mix it. Mix mix. Mix mix. There That's right. Yeah. Okay. I love cashews. My probably my favorite nut. Mm. Coffee coming in. Oh, thank you. We also have some local coffee. 
That's gonna go so perfectly with this cake. I don't know if I can let this cake go. You guys, it's gonna blow your minds. I'm not exaggerating, I'm not. Oh my gosh, I have to have one more bite and then I'm gonna pass it over. It's like a wafer and a cake. It's insane, it's so delicious. Like a pillowy, marshmallowy wafer cake. Mm, I love it. This is my favorite thing over everything. That's really good. You did not overhype that. No. Ooh. It's kind of like salted caramely a little bit. This treat is Brasso de Mercedes, and it's like an a ice cream and a meringue on top. Mm. Is there a custard on the bottom? Ice cream's a custard. Mm, well, even below the ice cream, there's like a different kind of custard. It's really good. Really yummy layers. And the graham cracker crust. I also want to mention that our local coffee comes from Sulu. The, the beans are from Sulu. And it's really good coffee. I'm going to be the first to try the Inu talk. And this is like a rice flour paste on the bottom. And then of course uh, an ube on top. And then we've got toasted coconut to really bring things home. It's a little gelatinous. Mmm. <laughs> and warm. First thing that hits me is the toasted coconut. Straight to the roof of the mouth. And this is really good. I mean, I'll take any ube based dessert. I think ube is delicious. I need to make an ube cocktail. Mm. I have to try a bite of everything. This is Bicol Lati and it's glutinous rice with caramelized sugar. I really like that. That's my jam for sure. I have to wonder if it's gonna be a bit like a flan because of the combination of flavors and textures. I like it a lot more than flan. <gasps> Mel! Melanie's calling! Melanie is calling. So we have to say hi to her. Hi, Melanie! My sweet friend family on YouTube! <laughs> <laughs> this is Melanie. She's the one who set this whole thing up. She's in Abu Dhabi. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melanie. You're the sweetest. <laughs> And back to our last dessert. It's the purple yam, which is what ube is. So this is really simple. It's just the purple yam, I think some milk, and the toasted coconuts on top. So very pure. I really like this. It tastes like, um, it has like a, a cookie dough consistency to it. It's almost like eating raw cookie dough. Awesome. Wow. I'm gonna call out that cashew cake as my favorite. Yeah. Yeah? Me too. Just a two minute walk from the restaurant is the oldest church in Manila. And King's gonna show us around there. King is explaining to us that it's tradition that when you travel, you go to the, the biggest or oldest local church and you knock on the door three times and then make three wishes, not for yourself, but for somebody else. And they usually come true. Welcome to San Miguel Church one of the oldest churches in Manila. King, thank you so much for showing us so much Filipino culture through the home, the food, and showing us this church here. We are in your debt. Pleasure is ours. So I want to say as well, thank you. Maraming salamat. Magsukul, dagan salamat, and muchisimas gracias. Those are thank you in our native dialects. I hope you enjoyed your stay. I hope you will keep enjoying Manila and the Philippines at the same time. Oh, it we was did. a pleasure meeting you and your family. And I'm sure, I know in my heart, this will, this will not be the first time. Well, this will be the first time. It won't be the last. last. Yeah, That's rather, right. it won't be the yes. last. Yes. It won't be the last time. Hopefully a lot of you have a chance to check out Cabell. It's an incredible restaurant with a lot of rich history and such a strong contribution to the Filipino community even today. And of course, at least for a limited time, if you stop by, you can try the Emo Cocktail, Aaron's Mango Obsession for yourselves. I highly recommend it, it's really good. See you in the next episode. Across the street from the President's Palace, which is called, Phil, Malasa take it Yang. away. Malasa Yang. Malasan Yang? Malasan Yang! And uh, tell them about the first time you ever said the name of this dish on a YouTube episode. Lumpia? I don't even know what I used to call it. I think I called it Lumpia no. or. Uh, I think Lumpia. Lumpia? Instead but isn't of that what I'm lumpia. saying right now? Lumpia. Lumpia. It's Lumpia, right? Lumpia. Now I forget. There's hardly a difference. It's about everything done, have some cocktails, some drinks while they wait. And. <clears throat> That's it. Um. 
Upstairs they have. Okay. <laughs> We learned a really fun fact about Mason at lunchtime, and that's that he has not left the country since he was three months old. Of US, the US. Of the US country. I'm gonna start over then. It's like, like, like coffee. A, a like, what? I don't even know if it's a real thing, but that word just sounds right. A hazelnut? No, Is that what has berry nut. A has berry nut. Doesn't, I don't even I don't know, know if that's a real that. thing, but. I don't think so. But it's really good. But that word just seems right. 